Hey guys, welcome to this uh, Unity tutorial on how to create a Zelda style health bar. So uh, this is what we're going to be creating uh, through the course of this tutorial. You'll be able to add in hearts, take damage and uh, regain health. So let's get started. Okay, so I have a new project here and I'm just going to quickly change the background color to white just out of personal preference. And uh, let's create an empty game object and call this health. So everything to do with health is going to be contained within this game object. And then we can also quickly create a C sharp script called health and attach it to there. And we'll create a new folder called images. So you're going to need a couple of images of a heart. Uh, just going from empty to full or full to empty and uh, drag those in there. All right, now you need to create a GUI texture and can just call this heart. And to this, we will apply the full image of a heart. And you can see that's distorted. So just under pixel inset, just change this to 58 by 58. All right. Now we're actually going to turn this into a prefab. So we'll create a new prefab, call this heart, and drag the GUI texture onto the prefab. And now that we have it saved, we can delete it. Okay, uh, let's open up this health script. Just wait a, f wait a moment for mono develop to load. So um, when we start scripting, we need to think about what does the script need to be able to do? Okay, so the first thing that we can think of is that you need to be able to either take damage, add health, or add hearts, you know, if the player picks up an upgrade, gets hit by an enemy, picks up a bit of food or potion or however it works in your game. So we are going to create some empty methods for those. Um, we're not actually going to need the update method, so let's just go ahead and delete that. And we'll create a public void add hearts. And of course, we're going to want to know how many hearts do we need to add. So we'll have an integer, let's call it n or amount of hearts to add, whatever you want. And we'll have a, another method. And we can call this modify health. And then an integer for the amount there. So if you're taking damage, that will be a, a negative amount. And if you're healing, it will be a positive amount. Okay. Now, we also are going to need an initial health. So we'll make that quickly. Um, and we're going to need to know how much health does each heart represent. So we can just call this health per heart. So now if we go over into the inspector here, can see we can set these variables. So we set this to 30 and 10. Now we know that at the beginning we want three hearts to appear because there's three bits of 10 health. So we're also going to need a reference to that prefab that we just created. So we can say public GUI texture and we can just call this heart GUI. Okay, and we know that in the add hearts, we're going to want to instantiate this. And we're going to want to instantiate it however many times n is. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a loop here and loop through our instantiation code that many times. So we're going to say for and set an integer i to zero. And then while i is less than n, and incrementing i by one each time, repeat this block of code, which is basically going to be instantiate and then heart GUI dot game object. All right. 
And in the beginning, how many hearts are we going to want to instantiate? Well, obviously, we want to get the starting health and then divide that by how much heart, I mean, how much health each heart represents. So we'll basically do that. Now, if we were to run this, let's quickly um, drag this prefab into here. If we were to run this, you can see we've got a heart, but just one. Now over here, we can see we've got three hearts, but they're all being stacked right on top of each other. So obviously we want them to go nicely in a row. And the other thing that we're going to need is to be able to, um, to reference all of these later when we want to change their image to a half health or uh, empty heart. So we're going to need to store all of these in a variable. But the problem is we don't know how many we're going to need. So we can't use an array. What we use is a resizable array called an array list. So we can just say public, I mean, private array list uh, heart equals new array list. Okay. And we also want to be able to modify the values of this new heart. So we'll just call this transform for now new heart equals. Now the problem here is that instantiate doesn't return a transform, it returns like an object or something. So we're going to need to cast this first to a game object. Okay, we need to cast this entire thing. And then we want to get the transform component of that since this is a transform. Okay, now I want all of those hearts to be a parent, I mean to be children of this health here, so they should all appear underneath this. So we can simply do that by saying new heart dot parent equals this dot transform dot parent, just like that. And um, at the end, we are going to want to say hearts, this is the array list that we created, dot add, and then um, new heart. Okay, so now to worry about the spacing issue. So let's create um, two floats and call them spacing x and spacing y. Okay, now in the start method, we're just going to set these to um, Excuse me, equals. And we want this we want to set these to the uh, to the width and the height respectively of the um of the GUI texture. Okay, and we also want to know what is the maximum amount of hearts that can appear on one row before it, it um, goes down onto a new onto a new row? So we can just call this max max hearts per row. Okay. Now um, this part gets a little bit complicated, so just bear with me. We want to say int y is equal to mathf dot floor. Uh, what floor does is it takes a float and um, it returns the lowest integer. Uh, excuse me, we want to change this to floor to int. Uh, so say you've got 5.8, uh, it will return 5. So now we want to get hearts dot count. Okay, now what this is, is the amount of hearts currently in the array list. Okay. And we want to divide that by max hearts per row. Okay. And um, 
what that's doing is basically if there's say say max hearts per row is equal to five and there are four hearts in here then um then it won't be a uh, it won't be greater than one so y will be set to zero and if it's if it's say seven and we divide by five it will be set to one because that gets us the amount of rows or which row we want this heart to be added onto. Okay? And then with x, we want to set that equal to hearts.count. Okay? And from there, we want to subtract y multiplied by hearts per row. Okay? And what that is doing is... Um, it's saying if there's a a new row, then basically reset x to zero. So um, when a new row starts, we want the x position to start again as well. All right. And now we'll worry about how the the new heart is positioned. So we'll say. Um, we we'll get the new heart and we will um we'll get we want to get its its GUI component from it. So we're going to call get component GUI texture and we want to get the pixel inset and set that to a new rectangle which is just going to be our uh, x multiplied by spacing x and our y multiplied by spacing y and then the scale that we defined at the beginning which if you remember was just 58 by 58 okay and let's see is that everything let's see do we have any errors Nope, everything seems good. Okay, we're getting a problem division by zero. Ah, yes, we didn't set our max hearts per row, which, um, let's just set that to five. Okay, we're going to have to set that to five again because it resets when you come out of play mode. And there we can see it's uh, it's working nicely. Now we can't test the uh, the rows yet because um, we've got no way of adding in hearts, and I don't want to implement an entire sort of upgrade system now. So I'll just quickly create a C# -sharp script and call this test. Drag this onto the main camera, and in here we're going to create a bunch of buttons. So the way you create buttons is um, you call Unity's on GUI method and uh, you basically call them with an if statement so the if is saying if this button is pressed and inside the if statement you actually create the button so GUI dot button and then you've got to define a new rectangle with its x y and width and height we need to create a reference to the health class so we'll just say public health health and now we'll just call those methods from here health dot add hearts one health dot modify health and because we're taking damage we'll just say negative three and to heal same method and we'll just call it with five okay and let's just go in here and we will drag that into there. Okay, going back into our health class. Let's take a look at some things. Um, first thing that we want to do is when this gets created, we want to instantiate it. 
at uh, at the uh, at its parents um, position and at a rotation of zero which you do just by saying quaternion dot identity okay and let's just see where these are being instantiated okay that's quite nice up there okay now when we add hearts these are being added in all nicely we want them to be added in below each other rather than above so let's just go into the health code here and change spacing y to negative height just like that and now when we look that's all working nicely and you can see if we were just to change this to say 3 it all just works okay let's go in and start coding the modify health so we're going to want to know what the current health of the player is so we'll create a private integer current health and um, right at the beginning current health will of course be set to starting health okay and now we can just say amount no, excuse me um, current health plus equals um, amount and so if you're taking damage in amount as negative obviously that will be subtracting and then we don't want current health to be able to go into negative numbers or above the maximum amount so we're going to say it equals mathf dot clamp so this is going to um, you input a value, in this case current health, and then you also say what is the minimum it can be, in this case zero, and the maximum, which will be max health, a variable that we're going to create right now. With a private int max health. Okay, now what we want to set max health to is in this add hearts function, at the end, we'll say max health plus equals n times health per heart so each time you add hearts um, your max health is going to increase along with them so you don't have to worry about that that will happen automatically okay and now um, if we just put a debug.log here to check that everything's working we can uh, we can print out current health okay so now we take damage and we can see if you just look over here the current health has gone down in threes like we wanted to but obviously the heart images haven't updated so we're going to have to make them update now so the first thing that we want is an array of all those images that we had so we're going to create a public texture array since those are textures and just call this images and let's quickly go ahead and assign all these images in there so We'll just open this up and we just gonna have to drag this all in one by one unfortunately I don't think you can um, just drag them all in at once if you can please let me know because this is very very frustrating especially when you have a large number of them okay so once you've dragged them all in then we can go back here and we're going to want to create a new method and we'll just call this update hearts okay so basically we want to call this every time that um that your health is modified so we'll say update hearts okay and 
we might want to call it every time you add in a new heart as well we can say update hearts because maybe you want functionality where when you gain a new heart you know all your health is restored so you can just say current health equals max health and then update hearts okay so now we just need to write this update hearts method and we're done Okay, so what we're going to be using in here is a new type of loop called a for each loop. Okay, and um, I'll explain this in a moment. Um, let's call this heart in heart. Okay, so what this is, is if you remember hearts is the array list of transforms you see we added in the transform new heart into it. Okay, so we're basically saying for every transform that is inside of that array list, repeat this loop and set the transform heart to that specific transform. What we want is we want to know now how many times has this loop gone. So we're going to just create an integer called i and we can just set that to one at the beginning. That'll basically be our index. And uh, we're also going to want a boolean, which we'll call rest r empty. And that is false at the beginning. Okay, so what the rest are empty is, is basically um, if we find that one of the hearts is either empty or partially empty, we then know that all the hearts after that are going to be empty. Okay, so what we're going to say is if the current health is greater than or equal to i multiplied by health per heart. Okay, so what's that, what that is saying is um, for, for the current heart, say we're working on the third iteration of this loop now, and we're on heart 3, then we know health per heart has been set to 10. So if the current health is greater than or equal to 3 times 10, 30, that means that this heart is still full. It's, um, it's completely full. So we want to set heart dot GUI texture dot texture will be equal to, and remember we had an array list of the images now, and it's the zeroth image that is the full one. So obviously you change that to the last, or if you create it the other way around, but for me it's the zeroth one that is the full image. Okay, otherwise, if that's not the case, then we know that it's either it's either empty or at least partially empty, in which case we know that all the rest are also going to be empty. So rest to empty equals true. And inside the loop we can just say if rest are empty, then do that. Otherwise, you know, keep on doing this long sort of um, verification type code thing here. So if the rest are empty, then we simply need to say heart dot GUI texture dot image, sorry, dot texture is equal to images and the empty one is the last one. So how we get the last one is we get images and we get the length of it and um, now we want to subtract this by zero, and the reason for that is because an array starts at zero. So if there are five elements in an array, the fourth element, I mean the fifth element, is, um, has got an index of four. So while it's got a length of five, there's no element five because it starts at zero. Okay, so now we need to work out which image needs to be displayed for the current amount of health that the heart has. Okay, so let's split this into a number of, um, of sub-problems. 
first, let's get um, get the health of the current heart that we're working with. Okay. Now, um, let me just type this out, and then I'll explain it. Um, so this must be equal to health per heart multiplied by, sorry, subtracted by health per heart times I minus current health. Okay, and we need to convert this all into an integer. Um, what's the problem here? Ah, oh, forgot, forgot my minus, it would seem. Oh, I put an I instead of a minus. Okay, now the easiest way to explain this is uh, just with an example. So let's say, let's say this loop has gone through three times and so you, let's say you have a max health at the moment of 30 and a current health of 28, okay? So now let's look at this first. We say health per heart times I. So as you know, that will be equal to 30. And then from that, subtract the current health. So you have a current health of 28. So that will be equal to two. Then we get the health per heart, which is 10. And from that, we subtract 2, and that's equal to 8. And that is how much health the current heart will have. Oop, I said current heart heart. That should definitely be current heart health. Okay, I, I hope that makes sense. Um, now we want to know how much health does each image represent. Okay, so obviously this will vary based on how many images you have. So, the way we'll do this is we'll say um, health uh, per heart over images dot length. Uh, what's the problem here? Images. Doesn't want to give me a length for images, that's interesting. It's definitely an array. Images dot... Okay, that's very strange. I'm just going to go ahead and ignore it and uh, do it anyway and just hope it comes around to my point of view eventually. Um, okay, so that will say how how much health does each image represent? Okay, and now we want to have a new integer, the image index. So um, what we're going to do is over here we're going to say heart dot gooey texture dot texture is equal to images, and we'll get the image index um, of that. Okay, so this will be equal to the current heart health divided by health per image. So we now know that um, th that's the index that we want basically. So if you have five images and you have um, 10 health per heart, then we know that each image represents two, two health because it's 10 divided by five. So um, then the current image that we want will simply be um, the current heart health. So say eight divided by how much health it represents. So say it's eight, then we want the fourth image. Okay, I see I've actually ordered these the wrong way. If you've got eight health, you obviously don't want it to be empty. So I'm just gonna rename these and add them to the images array again, and uh, I'll skip ahead to that. 
All right, so you want your heart going from empty to full. Okay, so now as I was saying, um, say you've got eight health, then we divide that by the amount of health per image, which is two, and we get four. So obviously eight out of 10 health isn't exactly full, but since we only have five images, um, this one here would be the closest representation of that. Okay, let's go back into the health class and um, of course we want to change this around to zero and this one to negative one because we changed the order of the images. Um, we also want to just set this to zero actually and each time this runs we want to increment that so plus equals one. Okay, um, finally what we want to do is um, we only want we only want the the empty image to be displayed if you have absolutely zero health. You don't want the empty one to be displayed when you actually have one health remaining. So um, we'll say if image index is uh, is equal to zero, so that's empty and um, the current heart health is greater than zero, then we just want the image index to be set to one. Okay, so only when the current heart health is zero, then it will display an empty heart. Um, there was one mistake that I made up here um, where I said I had this as dot parent. Just um, take that away. It must just be this dot transform. And I think that that is everything. Uh, yes, let's run this and see if it works. Okay, this is looking promising. Take damage, heal. Yes, you can see everything works as it should. So, we are done. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, leave a comment if you have any problems, and I'll try to help you as soon as I can. Uh, yeah, cheers.